This episode of Weekly Weird News is sponsored by Stitch Fix Feels and Upstart. More like Weekly Weed News, am I right? Marijuana. Weed, ganja, grass, wacky tobacco, it's pretty weird stuff, wouldn't you say? Sure. Oh, sorry, what's that? You're part of the more than two-thirds of the U.S. population who supports cannabis legalization and or you live in one of the 14 U.S. states plus D.C., Guam, and the Northern Mariana Islands where recreational marijuana use is legal and therefore do not find the topic of marijuana uh, particularly strange or weird at all. Mm. I mean, it, it is pretty crazy how far things have come in just the last decade with regards to the legal status of this plant. It all happened so fast, and it, I think it's a great, yeah. it's a great thing. I mean, hell, even one of the sponsors of this episode is a company that sells non-psychoactive CBD products, and even that would have seemed crazy just a few years back. Yeah, so really, at this point, it's not pro-pot people who are weird. It's the people who continue to insist that this naturally occurring plant that's literally impossible to overdose on should continue to be seen as a harmful narcotic. So... It was pretty refreshing to hear last month that the Joe Biden presidential administration was going to officially be looking the other way on recreational cannabis, cannabis use for its staffers. You can do it, but you got to come in and, uh, and wink after you've smoked. <laughs> sure. <laughs> uh, well, okay, not exactly look the other way, but past marijuana use would no longer automatically disqualify staffers from obtaining a security clearance. Because, yeah, I mean, unfortunately, cannabis is still technically illegal at the federal level for some reason. Yeah. Even a lot of conservative states have been like, I mean, it There's makes money. money. You've yeah. got the money there. You, I mean, listen, I, I categorically do not support taxes, but you get a lot of taxes from this weed. Mm -hmm. So, but I mean, hey, just, th just think about how many great minds over the years have been prevented from serving their country in, I don't know, the White House, State Department, FBI, NASA, whatever because they happen to have ever smoked weed even once. Yeah. Because that's pretty much how things have worked for a long time. We could have been to Jupiter by now if they let some potheads into NASA. I know. It's bonkers. Yeah. So uh, this step by the Biden administration to stop treating cannabis use as something that compromises a person's integrity and trustworthiness is a good step. And from the sound of it, it was also kind of a necessary step. Mm -hmm. uh, from NBC News, a White House official declined to specify how many potential appointees would have been otherwise disqualified from employment, only that the issue of marijuana use affected enough applicants that the administration decided to undergo a thorough review of existing policies. The White House's revised policy comes just days after the acting director of the Office of Personnel Management issued a memorandum to other executive branch department and agency heads outlining criteria they should consider when evaluating potential new hires. Quote, it would be inconsistent with suitability regulations to implement a policy of finding an individual unfit or unsuitable for federal service solely on the basis of recency of marijuana use. Kathleen McGettigan wrote, the nature and seriousness of the use and the nature of the specific position are also likely to be important considerations. So, okay, caveats. No uh, all day, morning, tonight potheads are getting security clearances, mm -hmm. it sounds like. Mm -hmm. But you know, tons of people have used cannabis at some point in their past. So, uh, yeah, they're not going to be treating that as a deal breaker anymore. That's, that's great. Uh, they still do expect all staffers to completely refrain from cannabis use during their job tenure, which is stupid. Mm -hmm. But uh, compared to the policy of most previous administrations, this seems a lot more reasonable, uh, especially considering that Kamala Harris, the current vice president of the United States, has previously admitted to smoking weed in college and also submitted a bill to the Senate back in 2019 that sought to decriminalize cannabis at the federal level. I mean, it would be pretty fucking hypocritical for this administration to continue treating any and all prior cannabis use as some sort of stain on a person's character, as a, as a threat to national security. So uh, these changes are very welcome. That's great. And now, whoa there, Haas. Not so fast. Um, looks like the White House has uh, already changed its mind about this. Oh. From the Daily Beast this past week. Dozens of young White House staffers have been suspended, asked to resign, or placed in a remote work program due to past marijuana use, frustrating staffers who were pleased by initial indications from the Biden administration that recreational use of cannabis would not be immediately disqualifying for would-be personnel, according to three people familiar with the situation. The policy has even affected staffers whose marijuana use was exclusive to one of the 14 states and the District of Columbia where cannabis is legal. 
Sources familiar with the matter also said a number of young staffers were either put on probation or canned because they revealed past marijuana use in an official document they filled out as part of the lengthy background check for a position in the Biden White House. So it looks like Joe Biden and his friends, uh, they basically flat out lied. Yikes. Hey, all are welcome. Well, mm, I mean, now that you've now that you've come clean about it. We all said that, it publicly, but privately we meant no. Yeah. So we did a little bit of what we call a honey trap there. Mm-hmm. We got you to admit. Listen, I'm going to close my eyes and whoever did the thing, just, uh, you know. Uh, oh, it was you. And then in, <laughs> in solidarity, to say I'm sorry, Joe Biden smoked a little weed and then decided to climb the stairs up to Air Force One. <laughs> this stuff really is dangerous. Oh, jeez. <laughs> this is a lot stronger than those mids they used to have back in the 60s. What'd you call this strain? Shaky legs? But yeah, uh, that sucks. Um, more from the Daily Beast. Uh, article. In some cases, staffers were informally told by transition higher-ups ahead of formally joining the administration that they would likely overlook some past marijuana use, only to be asked later to resign. Quote, there were one-on-one calls with individual affected staffers, rather ex-staffers, one former White House staffer affected by the policy told the Daily Beast. I was asked to resign. Nothing was ever explained on the calls, they added, which were led by White House Director of Management and Administration and Philippic. The policies were never explained. The threshold for what was excusable and what was inexcusable was never explained. According to the White House, only five people already working there were fired, but there's no way of knowing how many people were in the process of being hired and now won't be. Uh, This is stupid as hell. White House staffers can leave work and they can go get tanked at any of the D.C. bars that are literally a block away, but they can't go unwind at home on the couch with a joint that's perfectly legal in D.C.? Sounds pretty dumb. Yeah, also, like, this is bullshit. as far as, like, being a national security threat, I feel like alcohol would lead to way more situations where you yeah. have yeah, either loose lips or get into a situation where uh, uh, emotions would take control. Whereas marijuana, you, you don't want to do or say anything. Yeah, it would make you, you wanna... more cautious. <laughs> yeah. Any one nervous. of these people could be a spy. I'm going to shut the fuck up. Exactly. I'm just going to lock down here in this couch. Plus, like, it's not like... I mean, sure, a lot of people are social smokers, but... A lot aren't, and they just want to go home and chill and do it. Yeah. So Yeah. Me personally, if you gave me any cannabis right now. I would just go into it. I'm a, keeping all your secrets. I'm yeah. not telling a soul. I'm just going to go to sleep. Yeah. Can't get me in my sleep. But hey, uh, this is going to happen when you elect grandpa as president. So he's going to tell you one thing, he's going to do another. Yeah. Uh, except also, no, wait. <laughs> there was actually another grandpa running for president who promised to fully legalize cannabis within the first 100 days. Huh. In fact, most of the Dem primary candidates said legalize it. So it's more like uh, this is what happens when you elect a guy as president who has spent his entire career saying that we shouldn't legalize cannabis. Also, a guy who has been notoriously, historically hard on drugs. Yeah, unless it's someone in his own uh, family. Yeah, who, who he uh, can forgive. Who he can forgive and be like, you know, you're still a good person and uh, you deserve every opportunity. And uh, your addiction to drugs, my son, Hunter, mm-hmm. uh, should have no basis on uh, your character, Hunter. But everyone else, fuck them. Throw them in jail. I love you, son. Yeah, uh, it's it's fucking bullshit. But I mean, you this, he's been he's been very consistent about this since day one. Like nobody should be at all surprised that uh, Joe Biden is like twenty years behind uh-huh. everyone else, even in the Democratic Party on this issue. Um, real curious about that uh, that bill because remember, it was like December when the Republicans still had the Senate yeah. before the Georgia uh, election. Rock election, yeah. Um, the Democrats, they passed that big, uh, it was like the Moore Act in uh, Congress that would uh, delist it as a Schedule One substance and uh, retroactively get rid of people's uh, like jail sentences and criminal records. And they're like, well, it's going to die in the Senate because, you know, we don't control the Senate. And uh, now they've controlled the Senate for a couple months now. And I haven't heard a fucking peep Mm. about, uh, you know, when they plan on taking a look at this bill that would Mm. um, materially improve the lives of a lot of fucking people who can't get a job because they have a felony on their records. Sorry, it's going to, you know, pretty low on the totem pole for things. Uh, uh, We're going to need to uh, do that right before the next election. We are... Look, we're busy over here cutting child poverty in in half. Oh, forever? No. Just temporarily. We're bringing the child poverty back, obviously. Yeah. But we're we're cutting it in half. We're going to do this marijuana thing right before the next election so that 
we have it timed correctly to where the election matters. And if you vote for the right people, mm -hmm. then it's it obvious. But look, if, if you vote for Joe, win, if you vote for Joe, you can expect uh, 2,000 grams of marijuana in yeah. your mailbox. The sign seal delivered. Now, I'm saying 2022. They're going to be like, oh, well, I mean, I really hope you guys elect the right people. Otherwise, this is probably going to get hung up in the Senate again. They could literally do it right now. Joe Biden could literally do with any of this of right now you know, with a stroke of a pen. It's, yeah. uh, it's really fucking stupid. Like, I don't even smoke weed anymore and no. haven't for a very long time. Mm -hmm. But it's incredibly frustrating that pretty much everyone who's not an absolute freak is <laughs> like, yeah, who gives a shit? But because they only let those freaks and no one else uh, have jobs in the government. Yeah. Like, you know, you got a bunch of people making laws about drugs who have no familiarity whatsoever with these drugs. Also, like the other party, the party of personal freedoms. Obviously, this freedom doesn't count. No. Um, yeah. And, but you know, you can be rip-roaring drunk and on Oxycontin, but no weed. No. Uh-uh. Devil's lettuce. Yeah. Anyways, um, yeah, another dumb Joe Biden is one of his two huge drug-sniffing dogs, Major, apparently bit someone at the White House, probably because he smelled weed yeah. on them. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, rather than being rewarded for enforcing the law, Major was sent back to Delaware temporarily, <laughs> which... I believe is not a euphemism for something the farm. more sinister. <laughs> I think he's going to be okay. Oh, we sent him back to the farm. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this is what happens when you're inconsistent with your policy. The, the dogs are confused. Your, your drug-sniffing police dog, Major, is, is going to gonna try to enforce your drug policy. And then, oh, you get mad at him when he bites someone in the penis because he smells a little bit of dope? Mm -hmm. Come on. Uh, another Biden news, he recently fell down a full flight of stairs while attempting to board Air Force One. It was like the Three Stooges, like, doo -doo -doo -doo, it was a xylophone sound. Just, yeah. He had every stair on the way down. Mm -hmm. um, but then he got the bottom, he did a somersault, and he's like, ta-da. Yeah, it was like Willy Wonka. No, he, he, <laughs> none of that happened. But he did He did trip three separate times while walking up a flight of stairs. Uh, the White House has blamed this on the wind, which is hilarious. It's almost worse than just saying, yeah, he lost his balance. Who cares? Uh, actually, the wind blew him down. Just look, he's old. He has a problem. He's, yeah, he's, he's not that big man. of a deal. He's a very it's old man. It's really not that big of a deal. It doesn't matter. But it is. it was hilarious seeing all the like blue wave resistance libs on Twitter. Uh, like people would find people, those people like defending Joe Biden, and they just like search their old tweets for like Trump and stares. And, and it was just like doesn't Look at this dumbass with his stupid hair getting blown around. I can't wait till Joe Biden comes into office. Donald Trump can't even walk up or down a flight of stairs. He's afraid of them. Joe Biden's going to walk up all the stairs. He'll do. He'll do not. You know. You know what? Put a backwards running escalator going up to Air Force One, and he'll just sit there all day and just keep walking. Yeah. Yeah. I do like all the memes with the little, uh, the old people stair chair. <laughs> he rides it up. I like the ones where it's one. like, uh, you know, trying to do a trick, trying to do a trick while people are watching. <laughs> it's just like anyone yeah. watching, you screw like up. Getting getting home uh, when you're staying at your parents, and you get home from the bar, and you try not to act drunk while going to your room. You just crash everything. <laughs> Falling down the stairs. We've all been there. Uh, you know what? I wouldn't mind. We need uh, every president, since they're all fucking old as dirt, they need to be carried up by Secret Service. Like they're get, like like they're a sleepy child being taken to a yeah. car. You need <laughs> like a seven foot tall, just hulking Secret Service guy. Yeah. Come on, Joe. Puts him over his shoulder, carries him up, and yeah. uh, places him in his, uh, his little nursery up on Air he Force He passed Air. the coronavirus package. Just Joe should retire. He did it. He did it. Just so far, his out. legacy is fine. Yeah, leave now. Yeah, yeah. More presidents should quit while they're ahead. Three months in, that's yeah. it. You're done. Yeah, get out. Yeah, LBJ was smart enough to be like, listen, if I run for a, because he he was in half of Kennedy's term, and then he had one full term of himself, and then he's like, no, I'm not fucking doing this again. Everyone already hates me for this Vietnam shit. Mm -hmm. I'm out of here. If I stay in here, you're gonna hate me even more. Yeah. So I'm going to Texas. I'm gonna take up smoking again. Yeah. I quit smoking 20 years ago, but I'm going back to my ranch. I'm gonna smoke two packs a day, and that's exactly what he did. Yeah. There you go. Mm -hmm. Do it, Joe. And now everyone just remembers the civil rights shit. Yeah. They're like, yeah, LBJ, pretty good, right? Yeah. Joe Biden's gonna fuck up a whole bunch of the rest of his. Uh... Yeah. Term. We should have, president terms should be Three as months. short as possible. <laughs> this is probably a bad idea. Should, you should have all the people who want to be president in a room and they they use, they use do the popcorn method for uh, picking mm -hmm. those. Like, all right, uh, so that's my one act of legislation. Uh, popcorn, Joe Biden. Yes. There we go. Well, we've just solved the government. Yep. <laughs> Anyways, we've got at least four more years of fun Biden news. Fun. Four two. Uh, assuming there aren't any serious dog and or stairs related incidents uh, or 
video that looks incredibly like it's green screen, but uh, apparently it's not. He, it wasn't green screen. He was just clipping in and out of reality. Yes. Yeah. Like a gamer. But a lot of people out there are still extremely upset about the previous guy, Donald J. Trump, despite him now being confined to a COVID-infested mansion in Florida and forced to send out a press release anytime he wants to feel like he's tweeting. Donald Trump, he can't hurt you anymore, but apparently a lot of people want to hurt him, or at least uh, a wax <laughs> likeness of him, at the San Antonio Madame Tussauds Wax Museum. Okay, well, hold on. Hold on, everyone. The Wax Museum in San Antonio is actually the Louis Tussauds Wax Museum, okay. which should not be confused with Madame Tussauds, as there was a major split in the Tussaud family business in the late 1800s, resulting in at least two distinct, legally distinct, wax museum businesses. Okay. Anyway, now that that's clarified... Uh, yes, the Donald Trump wax statue at the San Antonio Louis Tussaud Wax Museum has been physically attacked by so many guests that they've decided to retire it for a while and uh, take care of the various repairs that it now needs. Mm -hmm. From the San Antonio Express News. Louis Tussaud's wax works on Alamo Plaza moved the wax figure of the former president to a storage room because a few museum visitors with intense feelings and a lack of self-restraint kept pummeling him. <laughs> They punched and scratched the figure, inflicting so much damage that management had it pulled from public view, said Clay Stewart, regional manager for Ripley Entertainment, which owns the Wax Museum. The scratches to Trump's face were deep. When it's a highly political figure, attacks can be a problem, Stewart said. Visitors' attacks on the wax Trump increased as the 2020 presidential campaign heated up early in the summer, according to Stewart. Not even moving Trump to the lobby, where ticketed attendants could keep an eye out for attackers, stopped them from taking shots at the statue, which is dressed in a blue suit and the Republican's trademark red tie. These people are paying paying admission to just get a chance, get a get one pop on the president. Charge him extra and let him do it like a smash yeah, room. Yeah, start a smash room, but with uh, well, see the thing is that the would, presidential library for Donald Trump should be a gigantic smash room. That would be awesome, but that would also just be a like honeypot for the U.S. Secret Service to be like, yeah, we we need a few more people like to get easy warrants to oh, okay. like search their online history. True, but um. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you got to really be mad at uh, a president to go to a wax museum and, and punch the wax statue. Mm -hmm. they, they, meanwhile, you're saluting the wax statue of the world's tallest man. Yeah. Look at him go. <laughs> He's, so, He's tall. so big. Yeah. But uh, and, and to be fair, it does sound like this is a problem at wax museums, regardless of who the president is or what party they're a part of mm -hmm. uh, from the article. We've always had trouble with the presidential section because no matter what president it was, Bush, Obama or Trump, they've all had people beat them. The ears were torn off Obama six times, and then Bush's nose was punched in. People are just aggressive about their political party. And yeah, we haven't brought this up yet. But yeah, this wax Trump is a terrible, shitty likeness. Looks like shit. <laughs> that, that man is not my president. Yeah. Um, and like, I, I know that Trump's hairstyle is ridiculous. Probably really hard for them to, to build from scratch. But yeah. this is all wrong. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a mullet. I don't know. Yeah. It does look at like at one point they did manage to get the hair a little more accurate, but this is, it's a horror show. It's probably for the best that it's been taken out of commission. Yeah, it's like uh, when uh, the rumor was that they had prepared the Hillary Clinton figurine still, at Disneyland. That's my, my favorite conspiracy theory that is definitely true. The Hall of Presidents, and they were like at the last second they had to turn it into Trump because it looks nothing like him. It really doesn't. And, and they do a pretty good job. They so. still haven't. I feel like that Trump Hall of Presidents thing was announced a lot earlier because they still haven't revealed the Joe Biden statue at Hall of Presidents. No, it's because he's still currently at the Haunted Mansion. They yeah. had to bring him over to the Hall of Presidents. <laughs> but I'm, yeah, I'm excited for what he looks like. Because, yeah. like, he's very old. Yeah. And, uh, you like, know what they need to add to the Haunted Mansion is that uh, uh, Prince Philip. All the photos of that guy. The memes going around, <laughs> around are incredible. The uh, yeah. little stunt SpongeBob, like, worm. He, he looks like... Like Egyptian mummies, because like their skin was dried out, so like everything sucked they would in. tighten, and they just have a big mouthful of teeth. It looks like that. Yeah. He looks like he's been dead for a long time. He and needs just to keep. They just yeah. put salt on him every day to keep him from decaying. He needs to eat some cake or something. Yeah, thick up a little bit. Give that man some cake. <laughs> I know you got cake in that Buckingham Palace. Yeah, let me eat cake. Let him eat cake. Uh, anyways, moving on to COVID news. Uh, by the look of things, we are definitely at the tail end of the virus. But definitely not the end. And if we've learned anything at all from this global pandemic, it's that people love prematurely celebrating the end of this virus. We've been doing it since it started. Yeah. Various parts of the country have basically tossed their hands in the air and just said, hey, whatever, just reopen. Who cares? 
even though the virus is still very much out there and the vast majority of the country still isn't vaccinated and health officials are still recommending against travel and large gatherings and being in public without a mask. Boring. I've heard that shit for more than a year now. And fuck it. It's spring break. Yeah. Let's fucking go. Woo. So yeah, all the spring break hotspots are absolutely lit right now. And this isn't just any spring break, folks. You're going to want to be at this spring break because yeah. this is the first ever post-COVID spring break. Post-COVID. It really isn't post-COVID. It is. COVID is still happening. It's, in fact, despite being on the, the decline, COVID is much worse off now than it even was during last year's spring break. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, like with that college party in Colorado that we talked about recently, the kids want to party. They do. The young people, they want to party. It's been a year. They want to make up for lost time. Yes. Uh Here's, here's South Beach, Miami. Fucking COVID's over, man! COVID's over, baby! Fuck yeah! COVID's over! Fuck that shit! Fuck yeah! Woo! Um, or at least that was Miami. That's what it was like until this weekend when the local government realized what a shit show they had on their hands. The huge maskless crowds on the streets of Miami became so out of control and so destructive. Like we said, this is going to keep happening. Yeah. People have pent up rage. You can't take a year away from young people yeah, and you expect them to say like, all right, carry on. No. No. They're going to explode. Yes. It's a powder keg. It's like you've been holding a can of soda for an entire year, just shaking it constantly. Yeah. And then you're like, okay, now soda's not illegal. Here's your soda. It's going to fucking blow up. Yes. It's going to explode everywhere. They became so out of control and so destructive that the city of Miami Beach had to set an 8 p.m. curfew for at least 72 hours to prevent the spread of coronavirus and also just the criminal activity in general. It was just chaos. It was chaos. But like with that party in Boulder, people stayed out anyway prompting police to go into full riot mode with pepper ball munitions and mass arrests. Like we've been saying, this is how every large gathering is going to be for at least the next year. It is. We got a late start, but now it is the roaring 20s. People are going to want to party, and there is nothing going to stop them. Every major music festival is going to be Woodstock 99. Did you Shit's hear? lit on fire. Did you hear that EDC Las Vegas is going forward in May? Oh, no. <laughs> Yeah, it's people gonna are going to actually fest. die. It's I mean, going to be a fuck fest. People are people e are going to die. EDC already has a death problem from a lot of people taking way too much ecstasy and in the like desert, dying in just the worst possible way, like having a fucking your seizure. body boiling itself. Yeah, boiling seizure in the desert. Yeah, uh, there's going to be a lot more of those. Uh, yeah, no, the the EDC like uh, official page was just like, if you don't feel like coming, we can give you a ticket for next year. But we, as long as Vegas says it's cool, we are going for it. Let's fucking go. I will be uh, watching that from the comfort of my computer screen on whatever live stream is available and just saying, I, I don't know, it'll, it'll be like watching like a Roman Coliseum. Yeah. There's going to be orgies and lion fights in the crowd. Yeah, they, I, that should be the way we we deal with this. Is everyone who wants to go hard, put them in a in a in a room with one-sided glass, uh, one-sided mirror glass, yeah. and uh, the real bar is on the outside where you got booths and chairs and you can sit and sip on a beer. Yeah. But the, the party's in the middle and everyone else can watch, but it's safe. No one's getting hurt. It's like there. one of those underwater restaurants. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like a human zoo. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm like, because it's Vegas, so I'm assuming this is going to go forward. Um, yeah, they need the money. Vegas, they, they, they're like, fuck it, anything. We'll take it. Yeah, it's going to be like hedonism over there. And like, I mean, it's Vegas, so it's like, listen, we've already had the worst possible thing that could ever happen at a major event happen in our city. Like, a little bit of COVID. No probably problem. not going to be great, but also, like, still improvement. Probably better in May. Than, they used to do it in June, where it was literally like 110 at night. So, yeah. Anyway. But it'll be interesting to watch. Anyways, yeah. whether a textbook super spreader event like spring break resulted in an uptick in COVID cases after everyone returns home uh, remains to be seen. Yeah. But uh, meanwhile, the cognitive dissonance between what governments are saying and what health officials and private businesses are saying uh, continues to create new Karen incidents <laughs> across the country. Uh, as we've talked about before, the state of Texas lifted all coronavirus restrictions about a month ago, but businesses there are still free to enforce their own mask rules. And this has predictably led to incidents in which otherwise very conservative people fail to understand the concept of private versus public property. Here's a recent Karen scene in a bank in Galveston, Texas. 
I'll say if, if they ask you to leave, you have to leave. My money is in this bank, and I'm going to take it out. Well, then you have to abide by the rules, that, and you have to have a mask on. Is, this is a state. It's not. It's Businesses have the right to refuse service, even if you're not wearing a mask. That's their choice. That's why I'm taking my money out. Awesome. Okay. Well, you need to go and get a mask, and then take okay. your money out. You're not allowed to do. I've been waiting here Ma'am, for Ma'am, listen. Minutes. We're going to do this the easy way or the hard way. What are you going to do? Arrest me? Yes, for intruding on premises. <laughs> That's hilarious. The law says that I do not have to wear a mask. You can not in public, my but you're right. not in public. You're not in public. My, yes, I'm not going to argue with you about place. this. This is not a public okay, place. I'm this is a private mine. business. No, you're business. not. We're going to go outside. Are you serious? Do I look like I'm kidding? Well, I don't know because let's let's all go off outside. You've got some issues. I've got issues that you're taking away okay. people's human rights. Okay. Oh, now he's going to shoot outside. me, people. He's no. going to shoot me for trying not to breathe. Cool. Come, cool. On, Come on, dude. Don't re- oh, don't do that. Oh no. Do not touch me. Who do you think you are? Point time. One oh, back thing. up, back up. Some old lady is getting handcuffed here. Not relaxed no, at all. Right here, people. No, no, it's not. No, it's not. Wow, what a bunch of sheep. What are you going to do? Arrest me? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's... Yeah. Mm-hmm. Anyways, this Karen incident isn't really that noteworthy in and of itself, since we've all seen what feels like hundreds of similar videos over the past year. People are asked by a business to put on a mask, uh, then they refuse to do so, and they also refuse to leave. Then the cops show up and arrest them. What makes this particular Karen stand out, though, is that despite being charged with criminal trespassing and resisting arrest, she absolutely did not learn her lesson. And just six days later was arrested in an almost identical incident at the local office depot. Unlawful discrimination by denying the entry of member of the public. Ma'am, if you refuse to leave, you're going to go to jail for trespassing. You can't. You want to read this? These are my. I'm rights. not going to ask These you These are again. my federal rights. Grab your stuff. Let's go. No, I'm not going. Okay. You're in violation of the law. You want to hear this or not, ma'am? What are you doing? Okay. I hope everyone's filming this because this is a major violation. Listen, I don't Hello, want to hurt you. A major violation. Are you the lady the other day causing issues in Galveston? No, I was a lady the other day. Uh, Third time is a charm for this Karen, I'm sure. Like, even just, even if she still disagrees with it, the amount of inconvenience involved yeah. in living like this, I don't understand it. Well, she'll be Are in you Congress just bored? soon enough. Yeah, she, <laughs> mm. I mean, I, I wouldn't put it past her. This is the, the, these kind of stories are the origin stories of bad politicians. Hell yeah, she's standing up for her rights. We should elect her. Yes. Just like that Lauren Boebert. Yeah. And oh, you can't Marjorie tell me what to Taylor do because I'm going to go make the laws. Yeah. 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 I hope she carries a gun everywhere. It's like there's for there, fun. at least some part of people who want to get into politics. Are, like they do it because they're like, I want to help people. But there's definitely a lot of people who are like, I've been <laughs> I've been wronged and I'm going to scorch the earth. Yeah. I got famous for being a piece of shit. People like me for it for some reason. Yeah. I'm going to parlay that into a career in electoral politics. Well, it didn't work out for Joey Salads. It almost did, though. Yeah. I remember being like, I think this guy might win. But, <laughs> uh, I, I, it, it, I think I wish he would have won so that the next person running could run on We Should Toss the Salad. I think Joey Salad's biggest problem was he took it too seriously. Maybe. Like, he was going around New Jersey in, like, a suit. He, was, he cleaned his act up. He was like, I'm not Joey Salas, I'm Joey Saladino. <laughs> this is his yeah, real name. Yeah, yeah. If he had just treated the whole thing... And no, I didn't drink my own piss. Okay, I did. It was a goof. Yeah. If he had just, if he had just gone around New Jersey drinking his piss, he's like, and used it as, a, you know, I'm drinking my piss until, this is what until they shut the border like. down. Yeah. yeah. Liberal tears. <laughs> yeah, anyway. Um, that's fun. I can't wait to see that lady's next Karen... Incident. Yeah. But speaking of assholes, they're not exclusive to the United States. Recently, an exchange between a student and a professor at York University in Canada went viral due to the professor not accepting a pretty valid excuse for why the student's work might be a little bit late, which was that the student is in Myanmar and they just had a fucking literal military coup of their government. Uh, Here's the student. 
Thank you for the extension, Professor. I have just learned that from tomorrow, all cellular data, Wi-Fi, and internet services will be cut off indefinitely. Therefore, there will be a total communications blackout. May I please get a deferral for the midterm test, too, or could the weight of that be added to my final since I won't be able to give it? And I'll be the professor. Mm -hmm. Hi, there is no deferral. It's transferred to the final exam. Last chance, bad sign. Even the internet came down with COVID-19? No, professor. The internet did not come down with COVID-19. There was a military coup where I am living and almost 200 protesters have been shot up till now. The regime has decided to shut off all communications by tomorrow. Does this mean that now my final exam will be worth 60% of my grade now? Something like that. Okay, professor, thank you. So I shouldn't worry if I miss the test tomorrow? Of course you should. The next time you miss something, it's over. By the way, your remarks, both related to this course and to your home country, made me wonder how you understand reality. People don't get shot for just protesting, but for a lot of deeper reasons. And with loading everything on the final exam, it's going to be tough to pass the course for lack of practice, if nothing else. So, um, yeah, yikes. Uh, military overthrew your government and is killing people and shutting down the internet to stifle dissent. Sounds like that's your problem. Yeah, what does that got to do with me? Mm -hmm. Hey, maybe you should have a little coup. Yeah, yeah that, and the remark about, like, <laughs> protesters don't just get shot for no reason. It's like, uh, um, what reality are you living in, sir? Are you pro-coup? I, I, I don't know if it's this was validated, or uh, but, like, this professor, he's, he's Romanian, mm -hmm. and people figured out, I think, that he was studying at, like, the University of Bucharest, like, when the Romanian Revolution happened oh, in the 80s. So it's yeah. like... He should know, he should understand uh, the level of inconvenience these things tend to, tend to might tend. have. Yeah. Although, I, I mean, the Romanian revolution, it did go over relatively peacefully. They, they mostly just took the Ceausescu and his wife and popped him in the head and, yeah. all yeah. right, new government. Communism's over. Get back to school. You better turn <laughs> that shit in on time, yes, buddy. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. So maybe that's his excuse. Could be. Anyway, sounds like he got fired. Yeah. So... Uh, uh, yeah, but, but hey, before we get into headlines, uh, let's take a quick second to thank today's sponsors, uh, starting with Stitch Fix. Now, you're ready to get back outside, but your closet, it says otherwise. Ew. Get some much-needed style updates with help from Stitch Fix. Stitch Fix offers clothing hand-selected by expert stylists for your unique size, style, and budget. Every piece is chosen for your fit and your life, and it's the easy solution to finding what makes you look and feel your best. Try on pieces at home before you buy, keep your favorites, and send back the rest. Stitch Fix has free shipping, easy returns and exchanges, and a prepaid return envelope is included. There's no subscription required. Try Stitch Fix once or set up automatic deliveries. You'll pay just a $20 styling fee for each box, which gets credited towards pieces you keep. And there are no hidden fees ever. Stitch Fix has styles and clothing to fit any occasion for women, men, and kids. They ship all over the U.S. and the U.K. as well. Get started today at stitchfix.com slash weird, and you'll get 25% off when you keep everything in your fix. That's stitchfix.com slash weird for 25% off when you keep everything in your fix. Stitchfix.com slash weird. Yeah, this episode is also sponsored by Feels. Do you experience stress or have anxiety or chronic pain or trouble sleeping at least once a week? Well, you're not alone. Many of us do. You've seen how late some of our uploads go up. It, it can be hard to unwind and get to bed at a decent hour after spending all day putting a video together from scratch. But luckily, we both use Feels. Yes. Feels is premium CBD delivered directly to your doorstep. And it uh, naturally helps reduce stress, anxiety, pain, and sleeplessness. All you do, do exactly what we do. Take a few drops, place them under your tongue, and feel the difference within minutes. Yeah, I like to I like to stick the feels under my tongue about like an hour, hour and a half before I'm planning on like going to bed. Yeah, yesterday I went on a, like a, a four mile ride, uh, pretty basic stuff, but still at the end of the night I was like, man, it's it's still gonna be pretty rough when I wake up in the morning. Boop, 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 boop. No. Anyway, the thing to remember about CDD is that finding your right dose is important, and everyone's dose is different, so leave room to experiment over the course of a week or so. You might need to take more or less to get the effects you're after. And if you're new to CBD, Feels offers a free CBD hotline to help guide your personal experience. Feels works naturally to help you feel better. There's no hangover or addiction. Join the Feels community to get Feels delivered to your door every month. You'll save money on every order, and you can pause or cancel at any time. Feels has us feeling our best every day, and it can help you too. Become a member today by going to feels.com slash weird, and you'll get 50% off your first order with free shipping. That is F-E-A-L-S dot com slash weird to become a member and get 50% off automatically taken off your first order with free shipping. Feels.com slash weird. 
And this episode is sponsored by Upstart. Last year showed us that you never know what life's going to throw at you, and if you use credit cards to pay for unexpected expenses, it can be overwhelming to manage that debt. Take control with Upstart so you know exactly what to expect. Upstart is the fast and easy way to get a personal loan to pay off your debt all online. Whether it's paying off credit cards, consolidating high interest debt, or funding personal expenses, over half a million people have used Upstart to get a simple fixed monthly payment. Upstart finds smarter rates with trusted partners because they assess more than just your credit score. With a five minute online rate check, you can see your rate upfront for loans from $1,000 to $50,000. You can get approved the same day and, and can receive funds as fast as one business day. Now, if debt is taking over your life, it's time to get a fresh start with Upstart. Find out how Upstart can lower your monthly payments today when you go to upstart.com slash weird. That is upstart.com slash weird. Now, don't forget to use our URL to let them know that we sent you. Uh, loan amounts will be determined on uh, credit, income, and certain other information provided in your loan application. So go to upstart.com slash weird. And now let's get into the headlines. Billboard thanking first responders featuring image of killer cop Christopher Dorner sparks outrage. Oh boy! Yeah. So this is this has been a meme on uh, certain corners of Twitter for a while, where like, uh, you, uh, like backing you, our boys in blue. Yeah, and it's like a picture you, of Christopher Dorner. Like, yeah. hey, like uh, you try to get prominent people to like wish your wish your uncle or your dad good luck, and you show them a picture of Christopher Dorner. Yeah. They're like, yeah, thank you to this hero here, and like you got Dornered. Yeah. Because uh, Christopher Dorner, he uh, if you don't remember, this was like seven eight years ago. He was a cop who. Um, he, he published this manifesto that had a lot of really good points in it, yeah. but then he killed some innocent people, so it's like... Yes, uh, <laughs> very, yes, very... But, you know, his, his reasoning was, like, surprisingly, like, lucid for a, a man who was clearly fucking insane. Mm -hmm. but he's just like, this is, like, one of the strongest arguments against, like, the corruption of the police I've ever read. It's a real shame that the guy who wrote it just, like, murdered a bunch of people. But, um, yeah, it's... Uh, the, the picture of Chris Dorner has been a meme for a while, and uh, this is maybe the apex of that. It was it was a billboard company throughout Southern California, where Chris Dorner was from. Mm -hmm. It was like, send us pictures of your uh, frontline heroes and a little message, and we'll put them up there on the on the freeway so everyone can see and, and feel grateful for these workers, and they can get out their pots and pans, and they can clap. And, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, there was pictures of Chris Dorner on the freeway, like three different billboards for a full day. Jesus Christ. So they got him. They got him. Mm -hmm. He got Dornard. America's COVID swab supply depends on two cousins who hate each other. Yeah, and they, it sounds like they've managed to put their differences aside, but uh, I'm more troubled by the fact that there's basically two companies in the world who make the type of medical swabs used in COVID testing. Yeah. Uh, one's in Italy and one's in like the backwoods of Maine. And that's it. The entire global <laughs> supply of uh, synthetic swabs is built on the backs of those two companies. Yeah. And yeah, the one in Maine, it's like it's like the third or fourth generation of the original founders and they're cousins and they they fucking hate each other. They do not get along. They But they put their differences aside for the betterment of the country? Well, for like all the fucking money they're about to get from the well, feds. Yeah, I mean, sure. But even still, they're like suing each other. They they've been in like legal uh they've been suing each other for years mm -hmm. over different shit like trying to force each other out of the company. They uh even the trial they They've been arguing over where the where the trial should be held, like closer to one of them or closer to the other one. Uh, they I think they they showed up for an event when Trump came through town last summer, but that was the first time they'd been in the same room in twenty years or something. This goes deep. Yeah, this goes deep. They say it started like they got in a fight at a barbecue in like the seventies, and uh, that'll happen. Hasn't been right ever since. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, I get. I mean, I, I'm glad that whoever. However, it was uh, we, the swabs. They were able to get those swabs out. Yeah, but uh, probably probably should have more swab companies. <laughs> <laughs> probably yeah. should uh, that that industry should maybe be a little more diversified. Maybe maybe. Mm -hmm. Angry customer demands refund after ordering a dozen masks, receiving only twelve. What did they What do they think a dozen is? Uh, a baker's dozen? No, they're like I thought it was like you know how we say dubs for twenty. Oh, I a dozen, yeah. dozen was like a dubzen. Dubzen. Uh, like a, like I a, want twenty twenties, but you only sent me twelve. I need I need twenty masks. This is bullshit. Well, did he get the refund? No. Okay. It's like you literally I mean, companies would probably be like just shut up, just yeah, have them. shut the fuck up. Yeah, yeah it was some Etsy stupid. seller too. Um, but yeah, I, I guess people, some people don't know what a dozen is. Wait till this guy goes to Krispy Kreme one time. 
Hey, I said I asked for a dozen donuts. There's, there's only twelve here. Cheap skates? The hell are you doing, sir? Can you please go? You're you're holding up the mile long line. Oh, there's a normal dozen that's twelve. There's a bigger dozen that's thirteen. Then there's the idiots dozen, which is twenty. <laughs> 20. <laughs> Just give them eight donuts and get them the hell out of I'll here. I have an idiots dozen of your <laughs> finest donuts. <laughs> Perfect. Start offering go. it. Yeah. Uh, Canadian lobbyist attacks Netflix children's film for anti oil propaganda. Great. It's like, yeah, it's some dumbass movie that's. I don't think anyone would have even heard about this movie. It's gotten terrible reviews, but yeah. it's called Bigfoot Family or something like that. And uh, yeah, the enemy is uh, an oil company. And uh, the, wait till they see Fern Gully. I know. Yeah. Uh, the, Robin Williams was in this movie. The Canadian, we need to ban this. The Canadian oil lobbyists—they're not happy about this children's movie. It's, it might make children grow up and uh, be a little skeptical of the oil and gas industry, who has their best interests in in mind and nothing yeah. else. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, we should condemn this together. And by doing so, we're going to elevate it why in popularity. Why doesn't Bigfoot fight the real enemy, the native tribes of Canada, who <laughs> are those pesky native tribes? Who getting won't, in the way of the pipelines. Getting in the way of our big, beautiful pipelines. Mm -hmm. It's like they, uh, you know, there's just no appreciation for what Canada has done for them by uh, building pipelines in their land and uh, ruining their crops and their water supply. Yeah. Come on, Bigfoot. Why doesn't Netflix do that, Doctor? Yeah, why don't they do that? Dad arrested after bringing toddler into elephant habitat at California Zoo. I didn't even realize the zoos were back open, but... Oh, they've they been are. open. And, yeah. Um, yeah, this guy almost did a harambe with some elephants. Stay the fuck out of those cages. Yeah, I don't get this, because, like, I mean... Animals are great. Love looking at animals. Would never go into an enclosure. An at elephant, too? Yeah. Like... Elephants can Horrifying. kill you just by like swatting at you. They yeah. are with their trunks knock you over. Absolutely massive. Mm -hmm. This guy got pretty close. It sounds like the elephant charged him. Yeah, he ran away. Ended up fucking dropping his baby in the process. Just Take like, the child. Yeah, leave me alone. I don't know what his plan was. Yeah, but um, elephants. Well, they, it's like with Harambe. The, Harambe was not going to hurt the child. He was protecting it. Yeah, it's like but the they, elephant. They couldn't take the risk. And yeah, if, if, if this had gone wrong, they might have had to shoot the fucking elephant. Which like. <sighs> It's not good. California, though, they'd, they'd shoot the child instead of the elephant. Good. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I, it's a tough choice. It's, yeah. like, it's like the old trolley problem. But uh, if there's a beautiful African elephant on Sir, one side. Sir, that, that elephant is on the endangered species list and your child is not. Yeah. Plenty of kids out there, buddy. Sorry. Yeah. Just make another one. Yeah. These elephants, they won't fuck. Listen, buddy, when people start hunting children for their ivory, maybe I'll have a little more concern about that kid. But Not uh, a protected species. Not a protected species. Man waiting on final paycheck from ex-employer gets 500 pounds of oily pennies dumped in driveway. What? This is like the people that pay their like parking tickets with pennies at the very petty at the, like the the city hall or whatever. Yeah. So the guy this happened to works at like a auto luxury car dealership or some shit. He turned in his notice and he said his boss didn't say a word and just left the room. Mm -hmm. And he's like, all right, well I still they still owe me a thousand dollars in back pay, you know, so uh, I can expect that check. And they're like, yeah, any day now. It's been like four months. He keeps calling. And in the middle of the night, someone brought like a fucking dump truck and dumped a thousand dollars in pennies, oily pennies. It was like motor oil or something all over his, his driveway. With so a, much work. With a message that says, fuck you. On it. So much work. It yeah. probably cost a couple hundred bucks to have that truck drop it off and to yeah. oil them up. And like, it's not like this guy quit suddenly. He turned in his two weeks notice. It sounds like... Sounds like this boss of his was a real fucking asshole. It's like, I wonder why people are quitting. Yeah. I wonder why. Yep. Ugh, oily pennies. Yeah. At least they weren't ass pennies. <laughs> then he'd have the upper hand. California theme parks can soon reopen, but please don't scream on the rides, industry group asks. This is such, this is the most toothless law. Sit down. Keep your arms inside of the cart. Do Keep not that scream. mouth shut. I don't know how I mean, they're everyone gonna... has to wear masks, and they're going to... You can't stop people from screaming. What, are you going to kick them out of the park? I don't know. I don't know how that's going to work. I don't know. People it's... are going to scream. It's, yeah. it's uh, you know, the amount of joy and excitement you feel on a roller coaster. You can't, can't just suppress that. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that's going to be tricky. You're going so fast on it. It's just going to... Yeah, it's just sucking everyone's air to the other. You would assume the particles would just go flying out. The scientists who mapped those hilarious uh, they should do 3D, 3D models of people just spewing germs on each other, they should do one for a roller coaster to see what happens. Uh, yeah, well, I, I'm actually curious because it yeah. seems like, you know, 
a theme park, like a park. It's outside. You know, you're outside. But you're in like the front of the roller coaster. Yeah, no, 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 you're you're screaming, ride, yeah. and then it's going behind you into the next person. Yeah, I only sit front row. That's I would only sit front row in all the roller yeah. coasters if I was going to go to a theme park. Yeah, I don't know. But um, I don't know. If you're going to a theme park right now, you don't give a shit either way. So Yeah. I mean, yeah, I think the people that are like dying to go back to theme parks are so jaded on them anyway that they can just sit there calmly. Yes, yeah. I'm enjoying this. Yes. This is fun. This is serenity to mm-hmm. me. Yes. Fox Guest says Crown isn't racist because lands it colonized have black and Asian people. Ah, checkmate. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If I was racist, would I have colonized, uh, you know, most of the known world, including parts of Asia, Africa, uh, most of the entire Indian subcontinent, um, yeah. the United States. So they, they took that one back, but not racist. It was full of pretty sure not white people. Mm-hmm. So... Um, would a, would a racist do this? Yeah. Colonizes half the world? Yes. Uh, and the, the guy on Fox who said this too, he had that that British accent that you can just tell like it's a fucking asshole. Well, you see, uh, it's like the Boris Johnson, like the posh accent. Yeah. No, the crown couldn't be racist, you see, because uh, they've colonized uh, so much of the world, so much of the world of non-white people. So many parts of the Commonwealth are not white. Yeah. So how could the queen be racist? Checkmate. Checkmate. Checkmate, Markle. <laughs> Brazilian politician's cunning plan to fight COVID. Spray hand gel from planes. You know what just might work? So they say coronavirus is in the air. Yeah. What if we go in the air if we and destroy it? We clean our hands. Destroy it from the source. With alcohol gel. Why don't we clean the air with alcohol gel? You go up high enough, you spray it all over the place. All the air gets cleaned. We and should now seed the, the clouds, virus is gone. Seed the clouds with isopropyl alcohol. Yes. What could go wrong? Yes. Yes. Just kill the air. And everything that it lands on. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, don't think they're going to try it, but uh, from what I understand, Brazil's COVID situation is not great. I don't, no. think, I don't think it's been great at any point in this whole thing. No. Uh, Bolsonaro's gotten it like seven, eight times, <laughs> seems like. And he just keeps getting bitten by llamas. He's, he's like this, he's got this weird genetic. Or no, it's uh, uh, e- was it emus. emus. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, Bolsonaro's got a weird genetic mutation where you can get COVID an unlimited amount of times and it's, uh, it almost kills you every time. Yeah but you still somehow don't believe that it exists. Yeah. Homecoming hack. Assistant principal and daughter charged with using computer account to steal homecoming queen vote. Election fraud is real. There it is. Yes. That's why you need paper ballots. Exactly. This is just like the, well, it's not nearly as bad as the, the deep fake story from Tech News Day last week mm-hmm. where the, the cheer mom uh, made essentially pornography out of her daughter's teammates. Yeah. But this is still... Uh, Parents are crazy. Yes. Parents who are this invested in their children's success, give me the creeps. Mm-hmm. And this lady, she decided that her daughter was going to be the homecoming queen. Damn it. Because she's living vicariously through her daughter. Of I would, I would venture to guess. Yes. So she abused her power as the assistant principal of this high school to make all the votes go to her daughter. Just like Joe Biden did. In the <laughs> 2020... No. I'm Michael and Daryl. I'm going to go down to this high school... And I'm going to get to the bottom of this because I'm sure this, is a princi- this assistant principal is not guilty and that it was actually China who is trying to yeah. do a cover-up here because they want to show if how the, vulnerable our elections are. If this mom can sh- sh- swing an election just using her computer, imagine what the, the evil, the, the demon rats yeah. over in the... The Democratic Party oh, are capable of. Uh, did you see uh, Mike Lindell probably very upset about this, but uh, Trump's going to be launching his own social media uh, uh, network, apparently. Oh, uh, what? Yeah. Oh, baby. Yeah. Oh, no. So I don't know. Mike Lindell's probably pissed about that. No, what about Crapper? Oh, my what God. About, oh, jeez. Vocal. Volsell. Why don't we join forces? No, no, I think I'll do it alone. No, Mike, uh, I don't think we will. I, I, I was there for will. you. <laughs> I was there for you through thick and thin, and now I'm being sued for a billion dollars. You're a billionaire, right? Can I have some of that money? No. No, sorry. No. Hey, bye-bye. Did, what's the name of Trump's social network? I don't know. I, did, I, I only saw the article today. So Trumper? I, yeah, probably something like that. So, uh, probably a uh, honeypot for him to get out of uh, maybe the crimes that he committed, and maybe he can just, uh, hey, if you get a bunch of people together to you know, coordinate uh, on illegal activities, we'll let you go. Very easy. Yeah, I don't know. Well, that's exciting. I'm excited about that. I've, I've missed him a lot. Yeah. 
Yeah. It's just a, an eerie silence coming from Mar-a-Lago. Mm-hmm. Crickets. Which has, yes, as we said earlier, had an outbreak. It had a big, it's, yeah, they've had to shut most of it down. Which is not funny because it's the workers there that are getting sick. Yeah. The yeah. only funny part is uh, the guests getting it. Because if you're a guest in Mar-a-Lago, you, know you are doing. almost 100% a piece of shit. Mm-hmm. And you getting COVID is funny to me. So, yeah. fuck you. Anyway. Uh, did you watch show. the Snyder Show yet? No, Snyder I, Show? <laughs> the Snyder Show? I don't think I ever will. Oh, okay. Well, I, uh, I reviewed it. I've read about it so much that I'm like, oh, I get it. I reviewed <laughs> it. Uh, it's right over here. Um, so, check check that out. Also, an episode of uh, Tech News Day for you to check out. And we'll be back soon next week with uh, more. Yeah. More. Endlessly more. Yeah, but uh, hey, I watched the Snyder Cut. That's behind us. Now we can never mention it again. Good. Yep. Bye. Bye.